Hi, and today I'm with Meg Calvin. I'm excited for her to share a bit about her book that she recently wrote. She's actually written two books. But first, I want to say hi to you, Meg. Thanks for being here. Hey, I'm so honored to be here. I've been learning from you for over three years now, and so it's an honor to be a, considered a kindred spirit. Yes, absolutely. Um, Meg has a mastermind uh, group, and she had uh, brought me into the group to share with the group, and I've always been really appreciative, Meg, of your support, so thank you so much. Um, so you've written two books and, um, you're also sort of, uh, moving from working in a nonprofit organization over to entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. there's a lot we could talk about that I think will be encouraging to, to my viewers. Um, but first I want you to share a little bit about your book. Well, let me, let me give people a little bit about your background. Um, you are a wife, mom, speaker, podcaster and a coach who helps fellow spiritually attuned go-getters find mm -hmm. confidence and certainty in who they were meant to be. And I love that. And, and your podcast is a, a, a kind of about that as well, kind of this intersection mm -hmm. between spirituality and career. Tell us a bit about that, actually. Yes. So my co-host, Miranda Pretty, and I, we wanted to hear stories of how every career is spiritual and also hear stories of divine breadcrumbs along the way that led people to choose the career they chose. Mm. And, and so we've been on the air, it was a year this last September. And so I think there's 54, almost, almost 50 episodes released now at this point. And we have molecular biologists and morticians and models. Um, we have a dirt biker, a rapper, educators, comedians, um, just every sort of career you can think of. We are talking to those people and hearing their stories. And um, it's been a blast. It's been so affirming and inspiring to hear, hear these stories. And we're hoping it's that way for our listeners too. Yeah, well, that sounds amazing. It's called the Listening Chair Podcast. Yeah. So the Listening Chair Podcast, that's great. Uh, and you've written two books. And I actually want to... Um, I want to talk a little about each one, actually. So the first one was called The Blue Bonnet Child, Finding mm -hmm. Grace in Poor Soil. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so the, that one came from oh, Elevator Pitch for the book first. It is, a, it is a book that helps us to offer hope to kids whose home life seem hopeless. Mm -hmm. And this came from my uh, almost 15 years in working in children and family ministry. We had five nonprofit programs and the, the undergirding heart, undergirding heart of my work, the undergirding theme of my work, the motive, the why that got me up every morning was I believe that the local church and, and schools and big brothers and big sisters programs like that can be and are called to be a supplemental family to kids of abusive or neglectful family systems. And so I, I wanted to, I wanted to write a book that was, for the busy practitioner and gave people practical steps they could take um, to make a difference and empower them that the studies show they can make a difference. And so in that book, it, um, it unpacks what I call the triple A approach. And I make the ridiculously lame joke that um, it's cheaper than car insurance. It's not that triple A and it's, um, but it's this idea that we are called to um, articulate how how the Holy Spirit is at work to heal their lives and heal any scars they, they might have. And in some cases, heal the relationship between the parent and the child. And so that's the, the first A. I'm, I think I'm getting these out of order. I'm sorry. Another A is aware to simply, that's the first one, be aware of um, any signs you can look for and um, what type of hurt or internal or external factors that the kid is bringing into your program. And then um, the last step is to advocate. So be aware, articulate and advocate and be, be a champion for the child's needs, whether that is in your nonprofit, in your church program, a school or the kid in the apartment next door. And so it, it unpacks the, the triple A approach as I call it. So that was, um, yeah, the first book was a, a ministerial resource for, for people that really wanted to make a, a difference with those, those kids who were struggling with those things. That's amazing. And it doesn't have to be somebody who is in, you know, heading up a program like that. It could be somebody who is, has somebody like that in their neighborhood or in their, in their life. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And and your second book is uh, more about your story. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about that. Yeah. So I apparently have this obsession with grit, and that came through in my first book, and it's come through in thought leaders and mentors that I've clung to over the years is that I'm obsessed with grit and helping people find it and and analyzing and observing why, why does that person have more of a resilient spirit than that person? Like she's been to hell and back. How is she so kind? So I, I was, I've always just been obsessed with grit. And so that was, that, that, that obsession led to, um, while it was present in the first book, in the second book, I really wanted to tackle it. Um, head on. And so that was the the start of the book was I, I noticed being a holy roller. And um, as I share in the book, I, uh, I started preaching when I was 13. And then by age 17, I was a paid, I was on a paid, I was a paid church staff member, which is insane. And so from 17 to 32, I was on a paid church staff. And um, I noticed in a lot of circles I ran around in, professional and personal, because the church was my professional and personal life, was that a lot of Christians, they thought words like ambition were dirty and sinful and ungodly. And they, they didn't have any grit because they were so burnt out because they had made every decision based on appeasing someone or impressing their parishioners. And so I, I, I really wanted to explore that. And it, it, um, it wasn't meant to have a memoir-like feel. But what I, what I discovered in writing it, which is what is so, one of the beautiful things about when you create something is when the creation starts to speak back to you and tells you what it wants to be. Well, what, what the work started to tell me was that I have this ridiculous stage of self-deprecating humor that is my life that I could pull into this book. And so, um, so it started to feel like a theological self-help book, but also a memoir and um, yeah, it's basically encouraging, encouraging the reader to um, the end that he already has enough grace for every wound, enough grit for every goal, and that it's time to take back your power that God has given you from others in your life, and and to own own your beauty, own your own your ambition. That God is. I even go as far to imply, and in in recent interviews have been totally heretical and said things like God has been waiting on your ambition. And I think it's true. And so that that's the basis of that book. And I, I like to say that it's as if the comedian Seth Meyers and the Benedictine nun Joan Chittister had a book baby together. And that's, this is the book that they would birth. And um, because it it is at times dry and satirical and extremely self-deprecating, um, so that that's yeah the two very different two very different books for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's it's so great that you allowed yourself to express, you know, um these different parts. So the book is called I Am My Own Sanctuary: How a Recovering Holy Roller Found Healing and the Power. I Am My Own Sanctuary. So um of course I'll have links to the book below. Um your author name uh on Amazon is Maggie Lee Calvin. M e g g i e, Lee L e e Calvin. So, um, so tell us about does this do do either of these books or or both, full uh, kind of work into your coaching and and your work with individuals? Yeah. So, um, with with the with the clients that I'm working with now, I am a a writing coach, a creative coach, and um, and so so much of what comes up in our conversations, part of it is about the creative process and taking time to point them to trusted personality assessments that will help them set themselves up for mental success by their routines and habits and environment. And, um, and then tools like, should I use note? Should I use, um, should I use Google or should I use Word documents? So those types of tools come up and accountability. And what I'm also noticing coming up in those conversations is um, negative self-talk. I think that gets in the way. And I'm sure you're with if your business have run into that a lot. And um, so we talk a lot about I talk a lot about negative self-talk in the in the second book for sure. Because in I Am My Own Sanctuary, I unpack the various parts of our sanctuary and the whole mind, body, spirit, soul connection. And so we, um, I, 
I share a lot on, on, on about these neuroscientific research that I have read that has been so helpful and healing to me when it comes to the power of how we talk to ourselves and um, when it, how the brain reacts when we want to take a risk. And, and when you're a cre I think, I think everyone is creative. Um, I, I think as uh, my pal, David Hayward, the, the naked pastor author and cartoonist says, he thinks everyone's creative. The difference is that some people create and some choose not to. And I think whenever we take a risk to choose to be creative, our, our negative self-talk is gonna be on full blast. And so I, um, I, like, to share, I like to share tips and techniques and um, around, around those things with, with people that I, I'm so privileged to be, to be coaching now. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, no, this is great. So this is, your clients are people who are hoping to, to write a book or to create um, other works. Um, so do you also, uh, so tell us more, like what, what kind of coaching do you most enjoy doing? So we're talking about this creativity, this, this mm -hmm. writing, but, uh, anything else you, you work on, you work with? So, um, I guess I'm in this state of life now where I have a, I have a side hustle. And so in, in, in my side hustle is, um, speaking and writing and coaching and um, and in that type of coaching, it is um, I'm helping people write their first book, and so so I guess creative coach. And then my I don't want to say my day job because they both they they both are my day job. Um, as a director of engagement for the Institute for Discipleship, we have an online learning platform, beadisciple.com, and we've been around since 2005. We've served almost 14,000 learners, and we have, we have this great ministry for content creators or solopreneurs that want to teach online, and um, we're fully accredited. We handle all the back-end work of the technological side, and I partner with, I, I coach them in marketing, and um, so that's another type of, that's another type of, of, of coaching that I do for Christian content creators or Christian course providers is helping them, helping them market well. That's and, great. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's been, that's been exciting. And a lot of the, what's interesting, and I'm sure you can uh, attest to this is that the folks that I'm helping write their first book are between the ages of mid twenties to 40 and the people that I get to coach in, um, in marketing their online courses, they are uh, 50 and older. And this, it's so, it's been so surprising to me, the same similar limiting beliefs come up and, um, things that I'm sure you hear all the time too, from, from your clients, things like, I can't just go and tell people to take my course. <laughs> well, yes you can but there's a way to do it so there's a way to make it about the person you're called to serve and sharing in a well-worded copy way <laughs> how your service will meet their needs and how it brings you joy to meet their needs and so um but lots of getting rid, getting rid of lots of limiting beliefs that hold us back from sharing the, the as you talk about the the joy of the work we do that is great reframing actually and given that a lot of those watching or listening to this are hoping to get out get a product out there such as an online course tell us more about that so let's say somebody is has created something you know that they believe is useful um, which your clients all have something like this and like you said they're they're having this this limiting belief or this negative self-talk about well um, I don't want to bother people <laughs> I don't want to bother people but then how do I how do people know about it um, talk us through a little bit about that, uh, that, that kind of hesitation. Yeah. Yeah. The phrases that I have found the most helpful to me when I had the same thoughts five, six years ago, when I had the tug on my heart, the phrases that have been most helpful to me, um, was this idea that and this might be a little woo woo or new agey, but the, the fact that the idea is in me to create this thing, it is there because there's another soul out there who's hungry for it and wants it and needs it. And is just waiting for me to get on social media <laughs> and say, Hey, if you want this result, I have this service. And that has been that 
remembering that truth has been really helpful to me and other, other clients. And, um, the other, the other tagline is not tagline that came out wrong. The other piece of advice that has been helpful to me and helpful to clients has been, um, to simply, uh, to simply observe other people's social media marketing techniques. And you can tell it, it only rubs you the wrong way when you can tell it's all about them and what they're doing. Look, look what I'm doing. But when you, when you learn to write copy in a way that's, um, one, one style that I, I know you're aware of is pain to paradise or prison to paradise. And when we speak of a time vulnerably where we were, this time of anguish and discomfort, and then the, we write the pivot moment, then this happened, or then I met, or then I found, and then this paradise of where you are now. Um, and when you, you end it with a perfectly phrased call to action that you're inviting out of love and joy, you're inviting the person reading that post to come experience that too, it doesn't rub you the wrong way. And it's like you teach, it's authentic and it's, it's good. And it's the same as if you were to see someone drowning and you had this life, um, a life, ah, not jacket. Life fest. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't just hoard it. You would, yeah. you, it would be second nature to just throw it at them and right. say, this is for you. Yes. So having, having those types of talks is, um, has been very helpful to me and to, and to the people that have amazing content and just yeah. need to get it out there. <laughs> mm. So uh, this is great. I, I'm hoping people can, can really, um, I imagine people can relate to this and it, it's like, you know, like you said, it's authentic because it comes out of your own story, your own life experience. Um, what about how, what would you, what's your encouragement for people who maybe they did put it out there? Mm. They were expecting a lot <laughs> and maybe it wasn't uh, as, you know, gotten as good of an uptake as, as they had hoped. What's your, any encouragement for them or any words of uh, wisdom? I would have, I, I would. <laughs> I guess it has something to do with grit, <laughs> right? It's like, it's like, oh, I put it out there, but nobody wanted it. So therefore must not mean, you know, must not be meant to be or. Yes. So we, um, I won't ask, I'm tempted to ask more questions, but I know it's a hypothetical question. Like there's just go with, go with the example. We, we, I, I did have one instructor that, that made this amazing online course last year. And, um, and it was about theology and film and it was by far, Oh, I shouldn't say that, but some might say it was one of the best courses we've ever had. And we tried to run it twice. And, um, there were three, three people in it and he wanted to wait till he had more. And so he, he himself pulled out of the, the deal until we offered it again. And so I guess, and I, I would not, I would, uh, I know my business coach might disagree with me, but I, I would say I have a lot to learn about marketing and what, what I teach is what I have learned from my own experience. And I'm so blessed now that I get to share that um, with online instructors. What I wish I would have said to him at the time was start here, start with these three that you have and, and po polish this baby up <laughs> and learn and build a relationship with these three people and knowing that, um, that those, those real authentic relationships are going to lead to a more slowly, but surely a sustainable business for you. And so I, I think that a lot of us, maybe it's not a, an, I think I was going to say a lot of us, big idea, big picture, innovative entrepreneur type. Sometimes we fall in the trap of it's all or nothing. And I don't think that's, that's healthy or helpful that sometimes we need to just start with who has come to us. And, and so, because the, the, the truth, I'm, I'm learning this for myself with, with small over the past few years, small speaking gigs that have come up, they, they have polished me and gotten me ready for what's next. And, and there's no way for what, what's coming right. The doors that are opening for me right now, I would have not been ready for five years ago. It took me little steps of just doing the cliche that's out right now, do the next right thing. Just the next right thing. Okay, the next C, what has been grown slowly but surely over the last five years. And still I have so much to learn and I'm so excited about that fact. 
That is a great, uh, thank you for that uh, reminder and encouragement that um, we are on this journey of development that is being lovingly guided and um, we don't have to assume that it's all going to, you know, sort of have this uh, fulfillment in our heads of what the fantasy should be, but it's like, no, there's a path and, and we walk it and we, we serve the person in front of us and, um, and we grow by doing that. So thank you for, for uh, your encouragement and that story. Um, Meg, it's been great to talk with you. Um, I look forward to seeing you continue to write books and, uh, you know, do your awesome uh, marketing in your, you know, of your courses. Um, where should people connect with you? You've got, we've got the, of course, people, you should check out Meg's books. You know, they're available, Amazon, et cetera. Um, Maggie Lee Calvin is where you, how you find her um, author name, M-E-G-G-I-E, -G -G -E, Lee Calvin, three words. Um, and then your podcast is the Listening Chair Podcast. Um, anything else you want to share with us before we, before we go? I'm so excited that you can go to my website, MegCalvin.com, and get Great. the first pages of the book for free. Awesome. And, uh, and so that's, you'll, as, as other marketing people are listening, it is the, the call to action um, button at the top of the, the website, and that will get you on my email list, and that will get you occasional goodness and support and um, encouragement to, you know, live into who God made you to be in your, in your in box from me as well but the most important thing you get is the first 50 pages for free of the book so that's um i'm excited that that just um well, once again that was a small another another small step i took in in uh, making my website the best it could be was i just added that with the help of, of my business coach and awesome well it, once again it, it's exciting to see just yeah. one step <laughs> totally that's great so it's meg calvin m-e-g-c-a-l-v-i-n megcalvin.com Yep. Thank you so much, Meg, for the work that you do and uh, just the encouraging and um, delightful presence that you are to your community. Oh, my, my, my pleasure. My honor. Thank you. Thank you.